Lord What love is this That pays So dearly That I'm The guilty one May go Son of God, given for me. My death He pays, and my death He dies. That I might live. That I might live. This love of Christ shall flow like rivers. Come wash your guilt away. Good morning and welcome to our morning service. The Lord be with you and also with you. A sentence from our gospel reading set for today. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. So let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past 
and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And our Gospel reading this morning is from John chapter 15, beginning at the ninth verse. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be complete in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love hath no one than this, than he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command, love each other. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Marion and Herbie had only been married three weeks when they had their first major argument. Now, it was Herbie's fault, of course, and so we don't need to go into any details. Suffice to say that the result was that, as far as Marion was concerned, there was picture but no sound. At first, Herbie thought about signing up to Marion and sweet-talking her round, but then he decided that he would start as he meant to go on, and so he gave Marion the silent treatment. That was Wednesday. But by Friday evening, Herbie suddenly realised that he was going to need Marion's help. And so he got a piece of paper and he wrote, Marion, since I have to fly to London with my work tomorrow, I have decided that I need to be the first to try and restore peace. Now, Marion, you know that I love you. So can we just put all this silliness behind us? Oh, and uh, would you mind waking me up at 5am tomorrow morning? Because you know I always sleep through the alarm. Your loving husband, Herbie. Feeling that he had been the bigger person, Herbie turned round and off he went to sleep only to wake up the next morning at 9am. His flight was long gone and Marion was nowhere to be seen. She had, however, left a note. It read, It's 5am. Wake up. Your ever-loving wife, Marion. A reading from John this morning follows on from last week's passage as Jesus gives us some teaching on the whole issue of love. In verse 12, Jesus said, My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. And since Jesus used the word command five times in this passage, then we can know that this act of loving is a command that's not optional. Indeed, in verse 14, Jesus said that loving one another was to be a sign of our developing relationship with him. As he says, you are my friends if you do what I command. So how can we go about training our often fickle human hearts to love in the same way that Christ has loved us? How can we learn this new way of living? Well, it was St. Clair of Assisi who once said, we become what we love, and who we love shapes what we become. So then the starting point for our learning a new way of living, a new way of loving, is found in thinking about 
our relationship with God. And since in 1 John 4, 8 we read that God is love, then it's clear that we have in him the perfect example of what it is to love as we look at how God's love has been revealed to us. And as we do then, we see that John's statement, God is love, can never be in doubt. For God has revealed this to us through word and action. It has been revealed in action through the life, death and resurrection of his son. And in words, in passages such as Romans 5 verse 8 where Paul tells us that God's love is offered even to those who do not deserve to receive his love. Or even in 1 John 4, 9 to 10, where John tells us that real love is seen in God's love for us rather than our love for him. God has shown us in both word and action that he loves us with a real love, but he also loves us with a lasting love. And again, we can identify how this lasting love of God is revealed in word and action. For the entire Bible, from beginning through to end, reveals the incredible story of God's constant pursuit of human love. Every passage, every page, overflows with God calling out to us in love, inviting us to come to love him in return. Think of that wonderful passage from Romans chapter 8, where we have that promise that God's love for his people never ceases. It never comes to an end. And as you do, remember that Paul was writing here from personal experience. For he had discovered the hard way that nothing and no one can ever separate us from the love of God. Not tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger or sword. Paul had experienced each one of these things. And as he did, he came to declare that no matter what was happening in his life, still, still he knew that he could rely on the love of God. And since nothing in the character of God can or will ever change, then we can know that no matter what situation we find ourselves in, we can rely on the love of God. God's love it's always there, it's always available to us because each one of us are loved by the one who is love. But as I said earlier, God wants us to love him in return. The heart's desire of the creator of this entire universe is that you would love him in return. The early Israelites came to recognize this to be so. And that's why each new generation were taught to recite what is called the Shemna, meaning to hear. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And you know, those words were so important to them that they would place them in, in one of these things. It's called a, a mezuzah, a mezuzah, and they would hang the mezuzah on their doorpost. And they would touch it each time they passed through the door as a reminder that everything they said or did that day was to reveal their love of God. Because they knew that more than anything, God wants us to love him and to express that love through the ways in which we love one another. To love one another as we are loved is the God-given destiny of every Christian. We are to love others with God's love. And this is to be seen in both word and action as we show concern for others and this morning uh, what we will be able to witness the practical outworking of this in our in-church services as we respond to the crisis in India, both in prayer and financially. Our love for God is revealed in the ways in which we love others, with a love that we receive from God, so that we show compassion 
and in the ways in which we are honest and just in all of our relationships, in the ways in which we will strive to be impartial so that we treat everyone with an equal degree of respect. So we refuse to be a party to, to gossip or slander and we refuse to engage in any form of malice. And that's quite a list, isn't it? And there's much, much more that we could add. Because Jesus said, we are to love as we have been loved. We are to love others according to God's pattern of love. And let's be honest and admit that there are times when this is so much easier to do than others. For instance, in this morning's service in Kilcronach, uh, I will walk baby Santhi through the congregation having just baptised her. And I have no doubts that as heads turn and, and look at that beautiful baby, their hearts will experience love. How could you fail to feel love when you look on a beautiful baby girl starting out in the world as a part of your church family? But unfortunately, we are human. We're human beings living in a world that's populated with other human beings and not everyone is so easy to love. So how can we carry out this command to love others as we have been loved? Well it might help if you could come to think of yourself, think of your heart as being a receptacle linked to the world by a kind of conduit. Now, the dictionary describes a conduit in terms of it being an artificial channel through which something is conveyed, such as a pipe being a conduit for rainwater. So hold that image in your mind. Because in Romans 5, verse 5, we're told that when we come to faith in Christ, then God's love is poured into our hearts. And the original word used here describes a kind of a, a flood or a deluge. So God's love floods into our hearts as a kind of deluge. That means that there's an abundance. There's an abundance with plenty to share. And this is where the conduit comes in because when we come to faith in Christ then the Holy Spirit then comes to dwell in us. And in Galatians 5.22 we're told that that one of the ways in which the Holy Spirit works, the only problem is that sometimes we allow the passage from our heart to the conduit to become our erlocked, so to speak. As our natural inclinations take hold of our hearts and our minds and we lose sight of who we are to be in Christ. And this is why Jesus said in verse 9, As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. For the only way that we can keep the love of God flowing through us to others is through remaining close to the one who is love. And there are three practical ways in which we can do this. And first one is as we come back to God anew at the beginning of each new day, asking God to fill us afresh with his Holy Spirit so that we can make it through another day of loving as we have been loved. Secondly, we use this time at the beginning of each new day to express our appreciation of this incredible love that God has poured into our hearts. As we praise God for all that he has done in our lives and as we express our praise, God will meet us in that moment and we will be somehow changed. So that thirdly, we move on then to invite God to be at the centre of all our thoughts and all our words. All our actions throughout that day. Keeping us mindful of who we are in him. As by his Holy Spirit, he enables us to allow his abundant love to flow from us over all of our relationships and interactions with others. Or as Jesus puts it in, Verses 9 to 10 of our reading, we continue to remain in him and in his love. The late John Stott uh, wrote that the cross is the blazing fire at which the flame of our love is kindled. 
but we have to get near enough for its sparks to fall on us. And so as we struggle through this, this life, trying to love as we have been loved, as we struggle to allow God's love to flow through us over all of the encounters of our daily lives, we turn towards the cross. The cross that demonstrates what true love actually looks like. Standing close enough so that the sparks of Christ's love land on us until we are somehow changed by them and others come to say that we are a people who have the abundant love of God in our hearts. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, uh, we're just mindful of our human weaknesses and failures and how oftentimes uh, we fail to show your perfect love to the world around us. And so we ask, Lord, that you would work in each one of our hearts and perfect us, mould us and shape us and equip us until we become what you would have us be. And we pray this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, you call us to love others as we have been loved by you. And one of the ways we can love is through being faithful for uh, one another in prayer. And so we pray now for all those who are struggling with a change of circumstance, either physically or financially, for those who are feeling lonely or isolated, either at home or in care, for those who are anxious about their health or the health of those they love. And Lord, we pray for those who grieve over the loss of loved ones. And this morning we pray especially for the Drennan family and the Ross family. And we take a moment to name all those known to us who need to know God's love afresh today. Lord, pour out your healing balm over the lives of all those in need this day. And bless them with a sense of your peace and comfort. Your peace and comfort that reaches beyond that of this world. And Lord, we lift before you now the confirmation candidates. And so we pray for Annie, Katie, Lauren, Tamsin, John and Sam. And we ask, Lord, that you would speak into their hearts as they prepare to make their commitment to Christ in your presence and the presence of witnesses. Take away any doubts or anxieties that they may be experiencing and open their hearts to receive more of you in their lives. We thank you for blessing us with their presence within our church family and we pray that they would find a home in us. We thank you for the faithful witness of our Sunday school teachers who have brought the young people to this point and ask that you would continue to use them to draw the children of our parish into a new and living relationship with you. Lord, this world is not all that you would have it be. 
There is so much injustice, inequality, human greed and a general lack of respect for your name and your ways. And so we ask that you would work in the hearts and minds of the people of this world, bringing them to a renewed sense of your sovereign grace, bringing them to the foot of your cross in penitence and humility through the sharing of your word and the work of all those who serve in the mission field. And use us, Lord. Use us financially, prayerfully, and in our witness of our love for you. And Lord, we continue just to pray for this dreadful situation in India. We thank you for the opportunity to contribute to their need, both financially and in prayer. And we ask that you would take our finances and use them to bring glory to your name. And that you would hear our prayers, Lord, for all those who are enduring hardship, suffering and grief due to this pandemic. And bless all those in need with a sense of your peace that will bring them through this moment. And now, Lord, we just take a moment to lift before you all that weighs heavy in our hearts. Lord, you hear the silent prayers of our hearts and you know our every need and you're always there standing poised, ready to answer our prayers. And so we thank you now that we can leave all these things in your care, trusting in your complete and perfect love as we pray together, our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Now to God, who by his power at work within us, is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and those you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing?